morning, good morning, good morning. Okay, as we head into Western, I'm gonna have a little moan. Now I try to keep the channel as possible as positive as possible. And this is only a light-hearted moan, but has anyone noticed and I'm probably aiming towards more so the people in the UK? Um, although anyone outside the UK, please feel free to comment if you see the same. Um, but have you noticed that with fast food establishments these days, if you went into them uh, a few years back, 10, 15 years back, you'd go in, you'd get your, make your order, you'd get your food, you'd walk out. If you went to the drive-through, you'd pull up, give your order, next window, pick up, and you're out. That doesn't happen anymore. Now you get a ticket and a number and you're waiting for your food to be cooked or if you're in the drive through through there's a huge queue and then they tell you can you park in grill order one please while we collect your food and we'll bring it out to you. Now a lot of people might think that's because they're cooking fresh and they're really busy and that's partially true but it's only because Uber Eats and Deliveroo and Just Eat take priority over the man in the street that is prepared to get up out of the house and either walk or drive to the local fast food establishment to get snacks to eat. Now I do like uh, fast food, you know, I, I try to keep it to a, a minimum of or a maximum of two a day, uh, you know, I don't like to overdo it, but I think it's getting to the point now where it's no longer even fast food, it's literally, you might as well order a Chinese or a pizza and have to wait for that to be cooked and delivered because your McDonald's and your Burger Kings and your KFCs now, they use these delivery companies and as soon as they hear that, that bell go off or that ringtone go off, and it's your Just Eats or your Uber Eats or Deliveroo or whatever, that takes priority over you and you can be stood there waiting. You'll see it happen in chip shops as well, you can be sat there and There'll be your cod is there in the back waiting to be put into a glorious bit of newspaper and some chips and some salt and vinegar. And then you'll hear the ding dong go when it's one of these delivery agencies. And that bit of cod disappears and it goes to somebody else and they haven't bothered to get out of the house even. Whereas you've gone and been a loyal customer and stood there and waited and paid your hard earned money. Not going to change, it's not going to get any easier. And that's a bit worrying because now it's easier to not have to go out to these places and get food than it is just to pop your shoes on, take a little stroll, jump in the car and go and pick up a, a nice snack for you and your family. Frustrating, I know, it is frustrating. I suppose some will say that you get it fresh and you get it hot because they're having to cook it. I and mean, I get that but it's not fast food anymore, is it? Maybe we should just all boycott fast food. Boycott it and until they learn that, look after the regular customers. Regular customers, regular customers to fast food, that's not good, is it? If I consider myself a regular customer to fast food establishments, then I need to take a serious hard look at myself in the mirror. No, 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 we don't want to do that. No, that would be bad. Just take a serious hard think about where my life's going. Yeah, anyway, we're heading back in west and I want to show you the sea monster which is uh, all finished and open and it's the art exhibition that's going on in Western Supermare right now and it's only here for a few more weeks and an awful lot of planning and effort to put it up. There were delays but unfortunately the delays sort of only mattered to the delivery of it and the setting up of it not to the uh, the date that it comes down, so it's still coming down on the same date as planned, which means there's reduced time to go and see it. But stick with me, I'm going to stop the camera now, when we get close I'll start it up again, but I've got an interesting fact for you about the sea monster. I'll catch up with you in a minute. Okay, so we're coming back round to Western Seafront now, where in a moment you will be able to see the sea monster. Which, obviously, as always happens, the GoPro will uh, not give it the full size and scale that uh, we all see. There's a lot of water here. 
almost like the uh, high tide came over that. It's supposed to not happen. There were all sorts of flood defences that they they have in these areas. Oh God, salt water on the VTR. No, run away. Probably someone parking up front. Oh, let's get this open, get some fresh air in, that's what we like. Got to love the smell of sea air. If you don't live by the sea, you won't know what I mean, but... Where does all this water come from? The sea doesn't come in this high normally. We had a lot of rain this morning, but that wouldn't have brought up all the sand that this is... Uh, around here. Right, what's going on? Okay, we're moving. Joking, aren't you? We're gonna have to wait for me to get past now. Indicators are good when you do stuff like that. Right so up in front, you can see the sea monster. It's all its glory. So there's uh, lots, lots of plants on it. There's slides that go from one level to the other lots of little things to look at and enjoy and take in I've not been on it yet myself but I'm here just but it's uh, it's pretty good actually a real good adventure I will try and get onto it but So we're just going to quickly stop here. Just very quickly, to explain a few things. Now where the sea monster is, just down there, is inside what used to be a Tropicana. Now about, oh, I can't remember how long ago it was, six, seven years maybe, maybe a bit more. The Tropicana held a art exhibition that was held by Banksy. Um, and it was, a, you know, it's like a fun fair type amusement arcade. Um, some rides and things and art um, uh, things are all around it. It was called Dismal Land, you may have heard of it. Um, now, interestingly, the PR team that runs Sea Monster is the same PR team that works for Banksy. So, is this another Banksy art exhibition? He just hasn't uh, put his name to this one. I don't know, possibly. I'm not, not making a statement out there, I'm just giving you some information. Make your own mind up. Um, I'm a bit sort of unsure about the Banksy thing. I mean, his art isn't particularly good. It's no better than any other sort of good graffiti artist that's out there. And most of it's all stenciled anyway. But he does seem to put a lot of effort into the intrigue and keeping it all secret of who he is. And, um, and not just that, but also the money that he does get. He does put into very good causes and gives free exhibitions. Dismaland was free, um, so I'm not knocking it. I just, uh, I just amazing how it's happened the way it has. But uh, yeah, there's a sea monster. All right, let's now make our way back. What it has done, and in the same way that Dismaland did, is it brought in, a, or is bringing in, a lot of tourism into Western Sumer, which is incredible.
absolutely incredible. I mean, look at this. This is a, a Sunday afternoon, a fairly chilly Sunday afternoon in October. You know, there's no bank holidays. It's not school holidays, I don't think, anyway. But Western Seafront is packed. Field there. Wow. And there is the queue to get into the sea monster. It's not too bad actually. Right, so clearly I'm not getting anywhere fast right now. Um, so I'm going to end the vlog here. I want you to take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the flip side.